there is a special a special kind of pain that comes when we are forced to let our dreams go like when we are forced to let our dreams die honestly it, it is kind of like a death because you are letting go of something you've wanted um something you fantasized about you dreamed about you thought you were called to whatever um and you have to let that go there's a special kind of pain that comes with it um having been forced to for a season let go of music and let go of singing and let go of traveling and let go of all the things that I was doing um honestly felt like a death it felt like I was experiencing a type of death because I didn't know if I'd ever get that back again and it was such a huge part of me and all that I really ever wanted to do you know like some folks are good at a thing and so they do it and then there are folks that are passionate about that thing and, and really have like committed to it and that's all they've ever wanted and that was me I did not care how poor or lowly I had to be as long as I got to be myself as long as I got to sing and as long as I got to minister um there was a great fulfillment, a great sense of fulfillment in that for me. Losing it, having to let it go indefinitely, um, has been and was extremely hard. Extremely hard. Um, not only was it something that I enjoyed doing, it was my source of income, which you know, complicates matters um, a lot. But mainly, I loved it. I loved it. Um, I used to, when I was younger, hear folks testify during a, a portion of service that we would call testimony service. And that was where folks would get up and talk about the goodness of God in their lives and what God had done for them. And I was, you know, five and six and seven. I would hear folks talk about how God had delivered them from all manner of things, from near-death experiences in the car to freaking cancer and just all this pain, all these calamitous um, events that God, God spared their, life, their lives from. And I used to always be like, God, I want, I want that testimony. I want something horrible to almost happen to me, but not really. At the end, you come through, yay, you get the glory. I had no idea what I was talking about and what was in store for me. Um, gosh, the pain has been and is oftentimes unbearable. It is not. It is not for the faint of heart. Um, but tonight I was laying in bed with my daughter. Um, and I found myself, we were saying our prayers. Um, Good night prayers and all that stuff. And I don't even know who sings this song. I don't know if I had the right words. But the chorus says something like, Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, oh God, my, I need you now. And then it goes on to say like, Lord, you were healing then. Be a healer now. You are the same God. I am absolutely truncating and like probably making up all sorts of words, but that's the gist. And um, my mind went back to how um, I was a um, 
a PR major and a Bible Bible minor in college. And I often used to joke about the children of Israel. And I would talk about ch children of Israel syndrome and how they were in the middle of, you know, the desert being delivered, though, from years and years of slavery and from Pharaoh and how even though they were literally eating from God's hand and he was in the middle of providing for them, how they began to complain, they got pissed off, they got weary, they got all sorts of things. And I used to always just be like, oh my God, how could they? <laughs> God was literally delivering them and yet they couldn't see because blah, 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 they couldn't see the forest for the trees. And oftentimes in this whole journey, I've been that same way. And you might be in the middle of some some kind of horrible place. I want to encourage you not to have the children of Israel syndrome. Instead, look at look at the miraculous in your life. Look at what God has done for you. Look at how you beat the odds. It's not easy. <laughs> Jesus, it's not easy at all. I am literally in the middle of a really, really hard place for me. But God is, God is restoring and healing. And um, all sorts of things are in the words that I can't even comprehend. Now, the doubting Thomas is part of my psyche wants to say, I don't even want to comprehend it. I would much rather just be pleasantly surprised. And there is a bit of that. And I I will have to um, continue, continuously combat that. But what I'm doing tonight is remembering the goodness of God. Remembering how I was in a coma for days and days. Um... And how my parents were being told that I would die. And how my child almost did not have her mother here on earth. And how, um, just like that, everything I knew was different. How my child was taken away from me so that I could heal. But then I did, really didn't see her for the better part of a year. Because of things that occurred that I really didn't have a say in at the time and I couldn't affect or change. Um, and though things are far from perfect now, God is in the process of restoring. And so there is a huge bit of trust. There is a big bit of trust there. And I, you know, the scripture says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And that is exactly what I'm holding on to tonight, faith. Because I believe that God is working. Gosh, it's uncomfortable. It's not easy. Letting go of my life is and has been more difficult than I can ever, ever articulate. Letting go of just the abilities that I had beforehand. I, I don't, I don't know if I will ever be able to um, articulate what that's like. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Um, watching others take my place you know what I'm saying do what do what I used to do um step in for me in places that I can't be hard hard necessary but so hard oh goodness gracious so hard um and I, I don't always do really well probably more times than not I don't do well um at at things, um, handling the grief of it all. 
But I want to encourage you because this, this is where I find myself um, just by myself a few minutes ago to re recite the goodness of God to yourself and to cry out. A cry is not necessarily an actual cry. You don't have to be loud. I legit was holding my daughter, putting her to sleep and praying to myself like in my head singing the words to that song and it was just as real as if I had opened my mouth and sang I think I recall mouthing some of the words to myself because one I didn't want to wake my child and two I don't sing the way that I used to right now because all of that is being restored um, so it's just a little bit different and I am a little judgmental of myself and of what um, my sound and you know that's something I'll have to work through and I will continue to work through but God is I mean Jesus is the same one who brought me back literally from the dead who healed me when all the doctors were saying it's a wrap for her. Um, he is the same one who gives me purpose now when I'm like, mm, bump it. <laughs> um, and so, I want to encourage you to do the same. Um, gosh, I, I wish I could re recall that scripture address. But, um, Gosh, where is that? Um, but it basically says one generation will commend your works to another. Basically, one age of people will recite the goodness of God over and over to another one to re build their faith and to tell them to testify. This is what God did for me. This is what he can do for you. It's not easy. But watch God move. Watch God move. Watch God move. And that's what I had, had to do tonight. That's what I have to do uh, almost every day, if not every day, several times a day. Um, and that's what I want to share with you. You could be in the middle of just hardship. Hardship beyond articulation. And I'm, I'm so sorry for that. I'm so sorry for your pain. Gosh. And I know that it hurts more than you can articulate. And I'm sorry for that. But remember who God has been. The song that, that was going over in my head says, You are the same God. You are the same God. You were a healer then. Lord, be a healer now. You are the same God. Remember that. I 